first and foremost, I've noticed that you co-hosts, you know, Atlanta, as well as Lovely, my co-host, they've been uh, going after different certifications, degrees, and really getting out there and getting forward. I'm still in the process, in my opinion, of figuring out who I am. I didn't even know that's what I was doing, but that's part of what I've I'm, I'm been doing for the last five years. And maybe it's taken me a lot longer to figure it out. But I'm trying to establish what really matters to me and how it works. But I did notice that a lot of um, women and maybe specifically black women are really going out there and getting this stuff like they're getting the, the degrees that they need in order to increase their, their wealth, their um, income and their job opportunities in the long run. But on social media, for some reason, I'm seeing a lot of negativity, especially from you know, from men, but really from a lot of black men, especially, you know, the counterpart to it. And it's so off putting because sometimes you'd be on like a clubhouse thing and the guy be out of nowhere. It's like, yo, I can't believe these black women getting this education. I'm like, mm, what did you get an education? <laughs> like, it's like, I can't believe they're trying to do that. Is your degree keeping you company at night? Why don't you get them dogs and the cats? I'm like, what the heck's wrong with you, man? And, and then what makes it worse is that the lady is like, oh, this is how all the guys think. It's like, no, this is not how all the guys think. I'm actually very happy that women are doing whatever they want or whatever they need to in order to just live the life that they want to. Like, what the hell is it has no bearing on me. But to hear what some of these guys are saying is completely odd. And it's not the majority of guys that think this way. I just want yeah, to Yeah, and I think up. some women, some women think that majority of guys think this way because of the commentary, because of the commentary on um, social media and these different plat- platforms such as Clubhouse. And honestly, to be very frank with you, I always forget about Clubhouse until you bring it up. Oh, yeah, there is a Clubhouse. Oh, it is. <laughs> I, I, I constantly <laughs> forget about this. But yeah, we we are in a position where women, specifically black women, are really becoming um, are, are, I would say, not even becoming are very goal getters. Like I have a sign right here, literally, that says goal getter, <laughs> you know, uh, to remind myself is in the position and where I am now. Um, I need to maximize this time. Yes, I'm single. I don't have kids right now. That's cool. Um, maybe in the future that may happen for me, but let me try to optimize the, the best version of myself with the time that I have. I have been procrastinating a little bit with the cert <laughs> of studying, but I, I'm surrounded with women who are getting it and they're, they're not looking at, at the, um, what they call the glass ceiling anymore. It's like, how can I break through it? And it inspired me, like my best friend going for a VP position. Like my best friend I know from over 10 years is in the rounds of potentially getting a VP position. And our close, you know, co-host is, is interviewing, doing all these great things with her tech business will be potentially executive at one of the biggest platforms, right? That inspired me. People that look like me are stepping up and saying that I belong in this room and this is the reason why, or they're creating their own rooms. So I I think for me, it's just like, I don't think about like the restrictions anymore. I don't think about the obstacles. I think about how can I be the best version of myself and how can I maximize this time? Because yes, I'm single and not married, but I want my spouse to be as much proud of me (laughs) as I am of him. Right. And I just don't what, what they call it, bring to the table pretty looks uh, and body. Pretty pretty looks and body. I think I think for me, I'm I'm bringing a wealth of knowledge as well. I'm bringing a wealth of experience and a wealth of um, my ecosystem, my network of people that are incredible. Right. That's what I'm bringing. And I want to expand that. But I can't do that if I'm just, you know, couch potato and not doing anything with my time. You know, it's, it's all cool. Netflix and binging every now and then. But just like, how can I get to the next level? What can I do for myself in terms of de- development and evolving in the best version of Atlanta? How can I keep my health in check? You know, like working out, trying to be consistent as I can. So it's a lot of moving parts, but I think I'm just in- inspired by women, man. Like Black women are just are just doing it. And we were talking before we uh, started record is you, you do hear, hear a lot of commentary, the, the back, I guess, the backlash of women, black women who are getting and obtaining these accomplishments and degrees. Um, but um, I heard it on a, a good friend of mine, their podcast, shout out to that absurd podcast is he made a great point 
of the, the last, I'll say 20, 20, 30 years or so with this generation of millennial women is we kind of just, um, well, society in itself kind of push up the black woman, like in terms of black, you know, women teachers, like encouraging women independence and uh, get your degrees. Don't worry about a man right now. And we've we done it so much, like almost like a hypercritical, hyper <laughs> intensive, you know, uh, aptitude where it's more of now we don't see anything else, you know, Um for me, uh, in, in, in retrospect, I felt like I could have focused a little bit on relationships, but I was focused on how can I get to the next level? And I was focused on how can I be the better version of myself? It was just me, 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 me. And um, but there is something else to be said is that, yeah, we we push the black woman uh, a, a lot, but also um, there wasn't really a lot of room for black men to be um in in a space where they were encouraged and, and having all these other um resources for them but uh, honestly I, I feel like that's somewhat of I, I can see his position in this argument and i totally get it how um that conversation and how that narrative have been pushed to black women but it's something else to be said where it's like you see yourself not necessarily uh, being a man, but you're seeing someone who's black, who's inspiring and in, in, in trying to do better for themselves. Why not take that as well and, 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 and grab it and to push that next level? It's, so, interesting. it's an interesting idea, but I mm -hmm. think there is a difference, just like there would be a difference for, for women to see just black men succeeding, right? If a woman just saw black men succeeding, then they couldn't see themselves there. So it's yeah. and to, to differ in the opposite sense than if black, young black guys, young black boys are seeing women succeeding, they're not seeing themselves succeeding. So that's also a problem. There was a there was a hyper correction, maybe, you know, based on the past and how the, the society and the, our, our communities have been changing and evolving. And that that hyper correction was very slight at first It's the idea that, hey, you want to make sure your kids are going to school, make sure the girl is protected, make sure she's getting an education to provide for herself. And those are normal, but it's kind of like, you know, rocking down a, a, a map and, and, and going down the road. But as the company, as you kind of deviate by 1%, you end up 30% out that way, right? <laughs> like that's the overcorrection. We ended up, you know, basically a little bit off the path, but the ideal is still there, which is really to empower uh, women in order for them to not necessarily be by themselves. Because we didn't want to grow up. In, I personally didn't want to grow up in a world where my counterparts are kind of left to struggle. That's kind of stupid. So that's not the, the, the world that I wanted to grow up in because I grew up with a lot of women in my classroom. But at the same time, I could see what he says um, or what a lot of guys are saying is that for us growing up, there wasn't any additional help and support. There wasn't an, an, any additional mentoring. There wasn't any generally not a lot of black male administrators or teachers in the classrooms or even in between. What you saw was basically men police officers. And that's about it. You didn't see the lawyers. You didn't see the engineers. You didn't see the people in between. You saw people maybe at the, um, uh, a minimum wage job. And that's it. So I think that was the problem um, in the last 30 or 40 years. I think that's something that we do need to address uh, to make sure that young young men are seeing us. And that job comes down to, you know, men like me, like not just me per se, but like men in my age group, we need to do a better job of showing up and we're not there. If we're not there, we're just repeating the cycle. We have to show up. We have to show face. We have to interact with young boys, you know, at, you know, call, you know, and, you know, whatever it is, if it is build, building a car, building a bench, you know, going, you know, working on public speaking, all that stuff comes down to uh, men like myself who are of age that have experienced life in a robust way to go back and teach as much as possible. And that's, that's the only way you can help. But this negative negative reaction to women succeeding is it's a combination of two things one because the a lot of guys right now in their late 30s or even 40s or 50s realize that they just can't keep up anymore nearly 55 percent of black households make less than 50 uh, 50k a year that's based on the 2021 uh bls which is uh bureau of labor statistics uh information and it's it's really going to show in the next year or so when we, they drop the median wealth uh, numbers you're going to see that we're just tanking as a black community overall, not just the women, also the men and also the families. We're tanking in regards to wealth because we're not figuring out 
that there's a lot more to do with really structuring and leading our community in a positive way versus in just kind of winging it. We can't just wing it anymore. And the, the next thing I would say is that money itself doesn't make you a good person. Having money doesn't make you a good person. The same way that we see a guy that has a lot of money end up being cocky, we're also learning that uh, women with a lot of money can also be very cocky. Very, yes, yes. <laughs> and very petty at that too. So it's a combination. It doesn't change your character uh, as much more as it enhances your character. So, so if you're always a mean person, a mean girl, a mean guy. Money, ooh, money is not going to help. <laughs> ooh, now you're even meaner. Especially yeah. on social media, you're cocky, you're angry, you're agitating, you're getting in people's faces. Those same women that were flawed in nature, right? They're coming after these guys. And, and it is just nasty. You're dusty. You Oh, you can't take me on a date over $200 per, per date. Then you, you're a failed as a man. Like, this is like some real caustic people. And it's I, guess, I think right now we're learning that that money itself does not necessarily do anything, but really enhances the nature of a person. If your character is nasty, then you're just a, you know, a, you're just a, a vile person all the way through. And that's what I think we're seeing now. We're seeing some very woo mean girls, which at first I didn't even think mean girls existed. When I was growing up, I thought girls were angels. They're la la la. Like when oh, I was, no, it was an entire like, entire movie about it. Yeah, no, no, yeah, there was an entire movie. <laughs> but that movie became like that movie was like this outlier. There was like a, a small group of ladies that are you know the mean girls. Uh, uh-uh. then I think you know what I'm wrong because the movie actually made a point to that that majority of the women. In the yeah. entire school were mean girls. It, it, it was a culture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, no matter which group you, I think that was the whole point of the last narrative. Like, no matter which group you think you belong to, you're being mean to somebody else. Like exactly. exactly. And that's like, wow. And in truth, now we're seeing it. We're seeing a lot of very mean women. We're seeing a lot of very hurt guys. That's for sure. And a lot of messed up guys. That's true. But we're seeing a lot of mean women kind of like sticking it now. They're like, aha, I have the power now. Ha ha, in your face. But in truth, it's only ruining our own. It's ruining our, our communities, our households, and ourselves. Yeah. Um, Man, we got, I, real deep. got real deep. <laughs> yeah, extremely deep. Uh, I, I think with the, the terms of money and being a different socioeconomic class, right? Because we're all, you know, first generation Haitian Americans. Um, and we're really the the image and the dream of what our parents wanted for us you know we're making twice or three times the income that they wanted us to make uh, we're in financially independent um we have you know ample amount of resources and options for ourselves and for our uh, families um but i think uh when it comes to like single women um who are amplifying their degrees and their accomplishments it takes away from their character it takes away from their um i guess more compass of what they're actually uh want in a potential partner and it does it doesn't really uh sway right to when it comes to men who potentially want to date them right no one want to hear that you know if, if that's all you can lean into is like your accomplishments and what what you've done then you, you know yeah you, you you'll make a man feel lesser than it doesn't have to be black or white like any man will feel lesser than see i don't even know if it's even lesser than i want to kind of highlight that because it's not because le- if a woman tell me what she does at work it's like that's what you do at work it's not as important to me on my standpoint for some but reason. no if if it's if, if it's in the context of saying like I make I make this oh, yeah, 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 and yeah, you yeah. don't yeah that's what I'm saying like no, no, I get, it's, no, it's I, more hyper the, yeah I get hyper the other critical side too, yeah that this other one I guess I want to highlight that one when women say oh this is what I did at work I'm like that's what you did at work it's kind of like yeah. my buddy told me what he does at work I'm like all right that's what he does at work it's not as right. important to me as my relationship with him or my relationship right. with her and I right. think that's the character part right because like yeah. yeah you go to you you've gotten a degree that's nice it's on the wall it's a placard. You know, like you've gotten a job and that's nice. It, you, you're going to work. I think that's just a normal facet of human life. Like as an adult, that's what you're supposed to do. Go to work. <laughs> like, But beyond that, like you got to tell me more about yourself as a person. So me to, to really care and value you because you going to work is not as critical as, you know, when you who are you when you come home? Who are you outside of work? Because you can't work all the times. You can't, you know, I'm not dating you for it to, to evaluate you as a job performance. <laughs> like, I'm going to need to understand who you are as a person 
And are you happy? Are you cool? What do you love to do outside of work? What the personalities? And it's something that you said. It's some people focus so much on getting earning the degree and also getting the job that they forget on really building who they are outside of that. Just like the Tom Brady, like I don't know what's going yeah, on, that, on yeah. the inside, but it seems like they're breaking up because of. I think she he, wanted him to really kind of settle after, you know, he won so many. Yeah, I think I think he confirmed that he was going to retire. And, sh- and I think they spoke yeah. about it years ago. And when he was going to retire, then he, he, he changed he, his he mind. Did, <laughs> no, he reneged once. He, knew, he, he did it once. Yeah. And, and then she, he went back. And I think she probably was like, you know what? I'm going to let you ride this, ride this out until we're, we're done. And then this time he actually said, hey, we're, I'm definitely retiring. And now he's trying to come back again. I'm like, come on, bro. You've done everything. You, can, you don't How need How old it. is it? It doesn't matter. Like um, he could be like four. I think he, he could be he's like in 46. his forties. Yeah, yeah forty six. Nah, yeah, I think he's 44. like 42, 40, man, oh, yeah, so forty two. Forty. Oh, yeah. up, but ultimately, like it doesn't matter. Like at some point, you're gonna have to work with your partner. And she says, "Hey, it's like it's done and done." Because it's it's not just like a job where you go in and clock in as like an accountant here. You're going in and you might get wrecked, and your brain might really suffer a concussion. Like for, for somebody at first it's very cool to see your, your, your partner doing like a, a sports or, or whatever event. That's really dope. But at some point you get to the point where like, there's some physical injury that you can sustain. Potentially. And that, yeah. Yeah. And that could really kind of impact you. And she probably don't even, a lot of people don't go to sleep at night. If you're a parent, you don't go to sleep at night comfortable with your kids doing something like that, or even your spouse doing something like that. Cause it's just a lot of risk for no reason, especially in the point where they have enough money. They have enough notoriety. They could go anywhere in the world. Brazil, damn, they're like, yo, if you want a house of Casa over here, we're going to give it to you right now. Like we're ready to embrace you anywhere, but yet you still want more of whatever that is. Especially if you have the security, the financial security and everything is in place. So yeah, I think, oof, yeah, that's, that's, that's really, in, 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 that's really tough too. When you say one thing and you go back. So I, I can see why the separation occurred when it did. Um, with women, um, speaking of security, financial security, it is hard in the black community to want, you know, potentially uh, a black man when there is, you know, um, the economic disparity um, in between uh, the incomes. Um, and we speak about more compass. Okay, he's 45. <laughs> we speak about more compass and character. Um, but it's also a- another part of it when you look at the longevity of your you know your relationship or potentially marriage or children sometimes um do you think it's a mismatch i know you mentioned like that person make you happy but also women fear i fear person i can't say women in general but i fear getting with someone and my quality of life you know kind of just go down because now i have more work <laughs> to, get to do because of the financial uh diff- you know the difference in income and um what we are uh, bringing in into the home so that is a fear for a lot of women too uh what we want in a partner so is it do i know some men online and they say that well you just have to settle <laughs> get an average man just settle you settle know <laughs> for an average man like, you want hey, a black man he, just is settle he's making 40k a year what, you just you gotta settle that? Hey, no, if he, you know, if he want to take you on a date on the budget. No, when you do that, like, come right, on, man, stop right. with the foolishness. Though. I, I literally want to like, just stop it and stop forcing women into these positions because I, I get it. Some women are going to be nasty, mean, so on and so forth. But you don't want that woman, though. I, I guess it's just that simple. Like, if that woman's already like this to you, that's probably not the woman for you. There's a ton of other women out there and there's some of, you know, even a, a ton of other men out there as well for the ladies that are looking for different people. There's a, you don't need to be or loved by everyone. You just need to be loved by one. That's it. And I think that's what I learned in the process of getting, you know, finding or being with uh, Doreen, uh, my wife, and really going down this journey with her. In the end of the day, like at, at the beginning, it's like, hey, I need to be, I need to try to holler at so many, cast a wide net. I need other people to love me. I need that, 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 that. But at the end of the day, you find out just need one, just need one. And to your point, it's a, it's terrifying to just you know be with one, especially for a lady, because there's a lot of years that you could put into this relationship, and it could really kind of be like to your point, very negative experience, or it could be a very positive experience. But a lot of people talk about the negative. We hear about the negatives all the time. It's scary to know that down the line that it it could be all on you, because a lot of men, you know, um, 
life expenses uh, expectancy is actually shorter for men than it is for women. So you're going to have to eventually carry that weight anyways. So there's a lot to be said about the the psychological struggles that exist there. And I think a lot of guys could stand to be a little bit more. It's not emotional. That's not what that this is. It's like you got to kind of understand what's going on in the Marine Corps. Like we 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 led a lot of people, you know, to the point where sometimes I was leading 2000 people or something like that. But as a leader in those type of positions, especially if you do it for a very long time, you have to learn who all your subordinates are, at, at least on a fundamental level. You have to understand them. And I think for guys, when it comes to quote unquote leadership in the household, <laughs> you know, like whatever that is, leadership doesn't mean you're it's not a dictatorship. Leadership itself is actually listening to everybody's input and making the best decision for the entirety of the group. And that decision doesn't necessarily it doesn't rest with you because you might not be the one with the best decision. The best decision might be coming from my spouse. Like every time that sometimes the decision that Doreen makes, I'm like, this thing's phenomenal. I cannot kind of supersede her based off of my own ego. So at the end of the day, I think people need to start opening themselves up, men particularly, and really kind of listen to other people, other people around them and even other women and to see, okay, I could see how this could be terrifying. Going in all all the way with this guy financially, that's terrifying. You know, um, have moving into his home, into his home, terrifying. You know, you don't know who he is if he behind has closed one, door. Yeah. You know, if he closed the door, you don't know who he is. Terrifying. <laughs> you know, he's this, you know, the size differential. Terrifying. There's a lot of things that women are going through that they say repeatedly that terrifies them. And you just have to listen as a guy and say, you know what? That shit would be terrifying. And because it is terrifying, I have to have space to say, you know what? I could see why they, they feel a certain way and why they want to lean into getting better educated, getting better degrees so they could feel sec- um, secured and comfortable. If, if, if that equates to the soft life, then that equates to the soft life. If that equates to them being, you know, spending their money the way that they want to spend it, so be it. I can't force people to do anything anymore. And that's, I think that was the, the lesson that guys were supposed to learn in this, in this uh, modern century, modern time. You can't force women to, you know, to do what you think you want them to do. I, is you'd be better off partnering with somebody and understanding that it's always been a partnership that survived. It was never the dictatorship that survived. Partnerships survive. This is why when you run into real people that have been married for 50 plus years, you understand that there is no the guys in charge and the woman takes orders. You don't see that at all. You see a, a true partnership and some people excel in, in taking part of the household. Some people excel in, you know, bringing in more income. Some people excel in how they uh, run the expenses or even excel in how they keep the, the family emotionally balanced. You have to be able to do it on both sides. I think that's what I've learned. At least I'm still learning throughout my marriage. And I, and I tell that, I told that to my buddies, even if I, at some point years from now, we get divorced, I'm not going to sit there and and cry about it. Why? Because I've learned so much more about the experience. And it's something that years ago, somebody told me that love is not vindictive. Love is not like, love doesn't seek revenge or love doesn't hate. So even in breakups, I, I don't hate the person that I was with. I don't have that kind of space in my, if I loved you, then I, if I loved you, then I loved you. So I can't hate you for it. You didn't do anything. You didn't kill me. You didn't stab me. You didn't hit me. So that that's a big deal. And I think we have to be okay with that too. You could be hurt that you're not with the person, but you can't start like hating the person because you're just hating yourself, hating your decisions. Black partnership. Is that the conversation we're getting into? Yes. Um, no, I'm just I'm just going by what you're saying. No, yeah, I, come I, up, you know. Cause... Yeah, no, I'm I'm reading it, I'm <laughs> it. and it, I guess it's very troubling because I do hear these guys go off on women over and over and over again, and then the ladies, for as balanced as they might be, some of them are a little bit weird to begin with because like follow like, but there's a lot of other ladies. They start believing that this is how all men think, and that scares me. As a man, that that scares me because I'd be looking at them like that's not all of us. That's that guy. That's that room that you went in with those guys. That's that environment that you keep going back into with those guys. Like you might be a very toxic person going to other rooms with toxic people. I could tell you there's many of other guys that do not think this way. And that's the worst part. 
because there's some some people that are kind of there's there's bad people there's extremely good people but there's more people in the middle that's basically gray and open to interpretation and the more that they hear about the bad people which are they're typically loud anyways the more they start leaning to the idea that this is how people really are and that's not true at all we we got to get off these uh social media platforms <laughs> and these media outlets um you did I, I didn't get a chance i think i was out with lovely last night i didn't get a chance to look at it you sent a um a link it says uh cancel black media black media what was uh, black, men? black men oh like, this was from julesy i actually follow her i think she's probably one of the most intelligent person uh, people that i've ever seen really articulate points from a toastmasters perspective like she, she this chick is golden maybe it's because she's in front of a, a camera i never i don't know if she does public speaking but in front of like that one camera and a one-on-one -on -one expressing her position even if i don't necessarily 100 percent agree with it i love a person that could have a coherent point and uh and supportive arguments as well for it and in this video she talked about i guess the this conversation and the funny part she did say that at the very beginning like if you click on it, like the very snippet that she has, is like, whoa, these people on Clubhouse are toxic. <laughs> like, and part of the, the entire conversation, and then she pokes fun at it in a very brilliant way as well. It's like all these black men, which is some of those black men, are now podcasters. So they have like the hat on, they got this thing on, and they got the, the, the boom mic right in front of their face. <laughs> and or, or they got a drink in their hand, and they're talking smack. And it's usually based on this relationship uh poor relationship advice or toxic relationship advice and i think that's what she was poking fun at and it's very true and she has clips on it and it's very terrifying to, to hear these things and to see how many people are co-signing to these terrible people and there's something that she talked about there that i think that's very important for men to get is that women are not merely valued by their by their sexuality she, she said the other words, whatever it is, but basically we can't value women purely based on just their sexual performance, right? And as Black men, for some reason in our society, in our community, we've been ta told about this in our, our media for so long. And as young men, this is kind of what we search for and that validation that we strive for. And as if you're pushing 35 plus and you're still having this conversation about how you see women in this light, then you are all the way messed up. Like, damn, if you're 30 plus and you talk about women in just in a sexual um, fashion, it's all the way messed up. Because all these guys, they don't necessarily want to protect or secure women when they say, oh, why don't you just want a guy that's making 40K a year? No, nah, you just want to sleep with her. Let's be real. You just want to sleep with her. You're just mad that you don't have access to sleep order because she's requiring a certain uh, salary cap, right? <laughs> but beyond that, like, you're just mad that you're, you're just trying to sleep with her. And, the, and the, the, the lady, she asked him, she, I guess she was looking at a clip. She asked him, outside of um, sex and money, what do you love about women? And the guy had a nasty pause. You know, like, he couldn't, he couldn't yeah. come up with anything. Like, he couldn't say he loved their company. He couldn't say he loved this, that, and the third. Outside of sex, primarily, he asked, she asked him the question, and he could not respond for the life of him. And I don't think he understand how messed up that looks. Because beyond sex, do you not believe that they have an intelligent thought? Do you not believe that they could, they could do more than just sex? Do you not believe that they could actually, you know... They could be your friends, your family, whatever. Beyond sex, this is all you see of women. And that tells me a lot about that guy and a lot about the way a lot of guys think about women. It, 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 was, it threw me off. I'm like, mm, that's messed up, bro. You can't even say anything. And I had to check. And I, I can't say I was perfect at it as well um, growing up. I remember a time when I realized that, and it was years ago when I think I was doing a speech to young Black men in the high school. And I was like, man, the smartest person, I, uh, smartest woman I know is my, my director at the time, who ended up being like the, the main person on top of at my job. It's the smartest person I know. Why? Because in five minutes, she could know the entirety of ent uh, the entire sentence structure in five minutes. She's that good. She, she could read a, a synopsis for 10 minutes and know more about the work than you know. She was that damn good. And when I was explaining to them, 
who the, the smartest woman that I know. Then I thought to myself, I stopped midway. I'm like, no, this is, she's the smartest person that I know. I cannot separate in my head. I don't know if that makes sense. It's like in my head, I, I just put her in the category of like smartest woman as if she wasn't the smartest person, period. Person, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Ba- based on her gender, yeah. yeah. I, I, it's almost her gender itself is like, oh, I'm like, uh, you're a credit to your gender because you're the smartest person in your gender. No, she's the smartest person I know, period, in life. And that's when I started to kind of unravel some of those fall, like those very odd narratives that run in my head about what I think a woman is and what I think a guy is. And yeah. I started untangling all of that yeah. for myself. And that's when I really start to say that I, I became friends with people like, you know, like you, I became friends with lovely. I became friends with other women because I realized that in my mind, majority of the quote unquote friendships I had with women weren't friendships at all. I was just trying to holler at them. <laughs> that's what I was trying to do the entire time. Then it's, it's, at that point I realized like, oh shoot, I don't, that, that can't just be the only thing I see in them. And I'm like, okay, cool. Wow. I need to really undo a, a lot of shit here. And I'm like, hey, I, and then I started listening to people and I realized it's just people that I'm listening to from women, men, whatever it is. And I'm still working on it, I guess, but it's just something I've noticed, at least in myself. And, and uh, I guess on the other spectrum of that being a woman, how, how you mentioned, you know, you spoke it so eloquently about seeing women outside of the sexual, the sexuality of women, right? As a woman, we had to carry ourselves where I had to let go a lot of just platonic uh, relationships with men simply because I know they seem, they did not see me outside of a sexual, uh, p- potential sexual experience. Um, Even if I could be as genuine, as trusting and want to help people as I can be, they don't see me outside of my sex. Right. And that was difficult because you have these great, amazing relationships, but they don't see that relationship. They see something more. And sometimes it's just more physical. Right. And it's it's difficult as a woman when you're navigating because we, we mentioned this um a few few conversations ago about navigating these spaces because you don't want to look too you don't want to be too nice and you don't want to be too hard either right because now you come across as you know a, a, a bitch you know um but you also don't want to be too nice where people run over you or disrespect you or also um where you don't see between the lines when someone trying to you know um run game or, or whatever and you don't want to be too hard because now you're just potentially pushing good people away too. Some people need to be pushed away. I could get that. So there, there's a balance that we always try to um, navigate and always trying to be, right? I think, uh, what's his name? Dave Chappelle said this a, a while ago on one of his stand-ups or maybe just uh, in the interview. He said that the, the best way to he kind of interpret, interpret women uh, how it feels to be a woman. So he was working at a, this is like early Dave Chappelle in his twenties or something at a rundown club in New York. This is four or five o'clock in the morning. And one of the owners, I guess he's a gangster or whatever. Um, just stuff he was doing, I guess, illegally. So h- how he paid him <laughs> after his, uh, stand up was all cash. Like it's the first time that he's like, you know, 2019, whatever in New York, this is the first time getting paid like in cash into this gig. Right. Um, and then he gave him a book bag. Like that's how much cash it was. He's just a straight book bag. And this is, you know, three, four o'clock in the morning in New York, maybe Brooklyn or something. He's getting on the subway. He is panicking. <laughs> he's like, yo, I have all this money in his backpack what the hell? Like someone can run up on me right now and just take it, you know? Then he sat there in the subway. He was like, that's how women feel <laughs> every day, every I remember that. I remember second. That. that was actually amazing. That, that guy, was yeah. a really good analogy. I'm just like, exactly, Dave Chappelle. You know what? It, it's convinced me more and more to see him um, in, in, in stand up coming soon next month. So I may do that. But oh, you gotta um, go see him in stand up. It's amazing. Yeah, he's coming in like, December. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about just rolling solo. I'm, I'm tired of asking people if they want to roll. I might just roll solo myself. But um, yeah, that's that's a great analogy. Just like we don't try to. It's, it's not me saying like, hey, you're going to I don't I don't want to be coming across like I'm a victim. Right. Or a potential victim. It's not that. It's just like I have to protect myself. And I'm not trying to like come across like you potentially can do this. Whatever. It's, it's not that it's just like I physically have to protect myself. 
and, but in, in, in how that looks can be different for, you know, um, for uh, whoever is the woman, whatnot, but no, I can't come to your house, uh, past X amount of time. No, I don't want to meet you here. No, you can't come over, you know, and draw me here. It's like, I, I have to think differently. Right. And I have to uh, approach conversations differently. So it, it is a constant navigation that we have to come across in, in, in these spaces when it comes to men. And then when you place a dating aspect to it, it's not to say that it's not to say that I'm trying to um uh well, you, you can't say that. Well, just vetting you at that point. Yeah, that's that's a great point, LG. Protection protection is expensive. Protection yeah. is thanks expensive. For, I, thanks, for, thanks for stealing my notes again, but I'm just saying. I, I'm just like, I'm just like, taking it. Taking, taking I, I'm, I'm taking like, them. I am like, taking like, it. But it's, it's true, a great point. Think about it. Think, like, because as much as I, people deride the whole soft life and stuff like that, and I remember even in DC where a lot of people would live. You know, it has a function of security as well. And those places are expensive. Either the apartment complex themselves offer some kind of like, hey, all the time security, or there's a security person rolling the, the place. Either way, you're living in a place that's more expensive than the latter. Whereas a guy, we could be like, hey, we live in the middle of nowhere, whatever. <laughs> like, we figure it out. Like, in a certain way, it offers us in, in uh, a false sense of security in our heads, like we can like, do whatever. But for a lady, that's the, damn near non-negotiable. You can't just say, oh, just live all the way on the outskirts of the city. That is a scary proposition, especially if you're coming back home late at night. You know, people have been um, had issues with even Uber or Lyft, you know, drivers. Now they know where you live. That's a whole level of like consistent uh, fear. And I could I, it's not about empathizing. with. It's weird. It's like I could understand it. I could see it, you know, like based on all the movies I've ever watched and stuff like that. And then all the, the women say how they feel like sometimes you just have to listen to them. And just say, you know what? Shit, I believe you. I, I had my partner um, talk about like the I forgot what a conversation was, but it was something along the lines with HOA um, here in Florida, where we have a lot of HOAs here, a lot of gated communities. Um, my home now is located in a gated community where you need access to get in and get out. Right. Um and I, and I, and I remember, I forgot what the conversation was about HOA, but, um, I told him that's really, I guess the thing here in Florida, because a lot of, um, residential spots and wherever you live, but it does keep, it does have a sense of protection, um, that you want to place because my HOA also includes, um, I guess the security system that I have alert system. If anything may happen, I have access to that. Um, even if I'm not here. So that's part of my HOA uh, package. But for me is, it's in a sense of not only protection, but I want to feel that, um, I'm, I'm protected in my well being is protected in what am I doing? You know, in my home is I'm okay because you have to move differently. You know, like you can't be in, in certain, you know, uh, locations or anything like that or shady location, whatever they call it, you know, and, and that's an aspect of being, you know, a woman. It, it's just it's just different. It's, it's not the same experience. And that's what I wish some men would kind of take into account. It is different. Like up until like late 20, early 30s, I had to come to the realization like not everyone needs to know where I live. If you need to pick me up, you have to come pick me up for a date. I can actually meet you <laughs> there. Cause that's uh, a good point. yeah, that's, 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 a good that's the point. point. I, I had to change that boundary for myself. Right. Um, and even with, if someone flying in out of town, you know, it's like, nah, you don't have to stay. Away. I have extra room, but you can still get a hotel. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's cool too. You can still get a hotel, that boundary, because now it's, 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 I, I want you to understand I'm more than just my sex, you know, and I'm more than, you know, just a physical part. Like I have thoughts, <laughs> I can articulate my thoughts and I, I want to see if you can identify that and acknowledge that for me, um, of, of who I am and my well being and all those other good components. And it's, 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 it's it is tough, but when it comes to expenses and when it comes to protection, you got to pay up. <laughs> you want to be in this safe community. You want to have access to the gates and, and security. Cause we do have a, I think, um, I never seen it, but I never seen him, but then he come late at night, whatever. Um, 
one of those security guards that's trying to drive by, think he's doing something, whatever. <laughs> easy and job, fly, I guess. Fly by. <laughs> yes, fly by. Easy rolling. job. But I will say, I will say, um, because Bruno accidentally pressed the alarm system and police um, came here. They was here less than 10 minutes. Oh, that's my. Not they bad. were here yeah. less than 10 minutes because as soon as I closed the door, I, I cut off the alarm system. I ha- I got to knock on my door. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, my cat hit the alarm. So you're like, what? Yeah, yeah, you that don't make a lot of sense. It's not like, like, like to me. <laughs> like, yeah, and they sent me a notice like they, they, they uh, warning. Left, and right, they left, left, right, left, left behind you. Are you okay, ma'am? Yeah, you, yeah. Like, so that that was interesting. You your but that that was that was a sense of security for me. Like, okay, I know that you know they'll be here like asap if I need them because I think they call you first. Um, and then they call the second time and then that second time bring like they're already on their way. And I do live close to a fire department. So that's really cool, too. So um, th- that's one of those things that you just have to think and move a little bit strategically different. And it took me a while to understand that more and more, because I will say and acknowledge and take accountability. It, there was some times it's just compromising <laughs> positions I placed myself in and me not realizing how trusting I was I'm like, Hey, I'm trusting. You should be trusting too. Nah, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Right. Cause I could be as balanced and as open, but if that person is not that, and I have to understand too, like men are very visuals and some men are not as balanced as I yeah. am or see through that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Are very not balanced. I think it's fair to like, I guess when I was in that Marine Corps, like one, I was, I lived in Haiti. So I always had my, my head on a swivel anyways, but when there was times where we were driving through places and you could tell the the feeling was off, the energy is off. And when somebody kind of says, oh, American, I'm like, I don't know, man, the way you said that, bro, they didn't really come out there. <laughs> they didn't roll out very comfortable. And you could that kind of feeling. I know that women feel it all the time. And I think that's really important to know. And I, I don't know who I was talking to about this. It might have been like with, uh, with my wife. We were talking about the idea that black people live in very expensive places. Not only that black women live in expensive locations, we live in very expensive urban or near the coast areas. And on top of that, then you have like, we have a lot of um, um, gay friends, like, you know, they're good people, but they also, and I had to kind of remind them, they live in very expensive places too. And I think that's part of the problem. When we're thinking about this level of protection, community, a sense of like feeling balanced and, and comfortable in a location, it comes at a cost and that value sometimes takes it takes away from your own humanity because you can't live everywhere else. You got to live in this location. You got to box yourself in. You can't just live in the middle of Ohio somewhere and feel comfortable. You can't live down the street, down the block in the hood because you already know what time is going to be. It's it's very troubling. And I think guys need to really consider and step back from trying to force women to to say, oh, yeah, you got to settle like, well, I wouldn't tell myself to settle. Why would I tell that to somebody else? I wouldn't tell my little cousins to settle. I wouldn't tell my sister-in-laws to settle. I wouldn't tell anybody to do that because it's just like, hey, whatever makes you happy, go for it. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. What am I going to do? I guess in Creole, some part fair. You know what I'm it's not my situation. It's not that deep. So when I do hear some guys on there going in on women as if it was like, their decision is the worst thing to ever happen in the world. I do feel a certain way about it. And I do try to speak up, but I think some people are just, they're already so conditioned to think that this is how a lot of guys believe things to be that they just like, Mm-mm. whatever that guy says, well, he says some balanced words. They do the deep breath back to the toxic, back to, back to the, to- I cannot believe that other guy said this, this, this. So did you just kind of like, you know, I just said, hey, stop going to spaces where people don't like you. I cannot believe that other guy said this, this, this. When I went to this other space, I'm like, stop doing this to yourself. Stop surrounding yourself with these toxic people. If a guy is drinking on a podcast, it's not a good look. <laughs> like, what's going on? Don't watch the podcast. He's probably not a, all the way there. He's not a salient guy. Um, it's getting to that point, though. I think we need, I don't know how, but black men need to step up. And step up in multiple ways. Either step up to know who we are, step up to know who we aren't, and also stepping up against um, people speaking in this way. So I get it. We feel disenfranchised. We feel that we don't have a lot of uh, say in the, uh, the life that we're living. We feel that we don't we don't make a lot of money. I get all of that. But to turn around and lash out against everybody that's near you, especially the women that's around you, 
is is beyond me it's wrong and i get it some of these women quote unquote deserve it because some of these women ain't right they ain't right in the head they they, but, can, they can be pushed to the core some 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 women oh, don't yeah. need a platform to kind of black. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm serious they, they yeah, really don't and i had to yeah. tell people stop sharing that crap yeah some people are they're, they're not right just think you know the best you can do is ignore them i think for as much as guys you know i would say this is only advice i'll say for guys like for as much women will complain and will maybe not, not even complain, because I think complain is a strong word to say, but would voice their opinions about this, that, and the third, just remember it's their opinion and they're entitled to it. And as men, what we do, we solve stuff. That's what we do. That means if they had an opinion about this, 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 you take out for what it is, the causes, and, and then you fix it. So you don't have, you have a different effect. And that's what guys, that's what, in my opinion, that's what real man quote unquote real man he's do. on the rabbit ear so you guys know <laughs> real men the do. rabbit real ears. men step up real men figure things out real men say you know what i see what these ladies are saying i see the idea that they're throwing out here and maybe you know some of it i don't really like but maybe it's, it's time for me to work on myself maybe it's time for me to get an extra job maybe it's time for me to get off the couch maybe it's time for me to really double down and decide on a career instead of just a job Maybe it's time for me to really understand that um, building a family, building a home, having kids is actually more expensive than 40, 40 grand per year. It's actually more so like 90K per year. If you ain't doing the 90K, then get on it. And if you're never going to do the 90K, it doesn't mean that a woman will never love you. It's that you just have to remember that not all these other new women that wants a $100,000 man going to want you. And that's OK, because there's a whole lot of other ladies that are out there that are okay with just being happy, getting to know you. But you have to be, you have to be somebody. You have to be a you to, to actually matter anyway. So if you have no personality, no character, no morals, no, no thinking pattern, no perspective, and you're not learned, then who are they getting into a relationship with anyways? Or are, are you just looking at them for sex? And if that's the it, case, it goes both ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, goes it definitely ways. goes. I'm just talking to the guys. If, that, if that's the case that you're just looking at them for sex, just know that it costs. Different women have different values. <laughs> and, it, it, and it costs. <laughs> Definitely. When you were saying that, I was just like, should, should, should men just only date <laughs> women? In their, in their, in their tax in their, bracket? In their test bracket. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, the, that's the question that's going on. I don't. You, I don't, you, I don't. That's true. That, but that's, that is true. You date whoever is within who... Yeah, I guess in the aisle, in the, in the grocery store, whatever it is. It sounds it, bad, but it's but it's, it's not. It's not just so bad. Like it's kind of like you know. I don't go to Whole Foods all the time. I'm not in that tax bracket. I'm not in the Whole Foods. You know, like <laughs> demographics here. Like that person that goes to Whole Foods all the time, like cook for, for for groceries all day every day, are getting paid a certain amount. I'm not in that kind of bracket, and I'm okay with that. And you have to be okay with yourself. That's why I mean that you have to know who you are. And if you un are unhappy as a person, it doesn't matter, you know, the amount of money that you're making. You are just an unhappy person. And I think a lot of these men are merely just unhappy. With themselves. Yeah. Uh, and uh, some of these women, but a lot of these men, if we had to just lower it down. So partnership is powerful, but you're still going to have to do the work on you. Man. What a weird episode of the financial. No, it was a good episode. Listen. We were we were talking through it. Yeah, yeah, know, I, I get. No, people <laughs> love people actually love these episodes too. They actually mm -hmm. uh, tune in and check it out, and hopefully you get something from it. And at, at the same time, you share with some other friends. Like maybe that perspective that you gotten. Maybe you you, know, you don't want them to listen to the entire episode, but tell them like, hey, fifteen seconds were really good, and I, it really hit me. Or maybe I need to do some work. Or you actually go through some of these episodes and tell us as well, like, what do you want to hear from us? Because I could rattle on financial information all day, every day, you know, from a number, from a technical standpoint, but it's going to come down to you as to what do you want to hear from us? So let us know, chime in, you know, I guess write us some, some, some comments or something, because we're going to be rich no matter what. Oh, definitely. That was it's a shady. Just... That was a, a shady. End. It always ends shady. Like, no matter, don't, don't worry about me. I'm gonna be rich. <laughs> like, like you're gonna struggle if you want to, but we're just trying to help you. No, I love the fact that we always um, move. Not necessarily move, but we always bring back the financial component of it when it comes to dating. When it comes to like um, making an expensive purchase, but it, it always costs. 
dating, choosing a partner costs. It will cost you on the front end, the back end, however, it really costs. Um, living in a, in a urban community or living in a specific community that you want or meet the image of the lifestyle that you want will cost. Everything has is a monetarily, you know, value when it comes to what you're seeking. So when we're talking about just understanding yourself, getting to know yourself, um, trying to become a better person, because in some form of the other or some level, it will cost you. If you're a, a, a toxic person and sees women only on the physical aspect, getting a wife and kids ain't gonna help, brother. <laughs> it's not gonna help. It's only going to magnify your issues and that's the same thing goes for women too constantly hearing these you know negative commentary about women who are accomplishing these things it's not going to help your psyche when you're trying to potentially look for a mate specifically if you're looking for a black mate every man is not the same every man don't think these ways it is it's up to you to decipher and to vet to see if this person is extremely for you and not just your body or not just how you look you know, generally for you. So I, I think, I think we touch on some, some great points in this. And I'm, I'm, I love this conversation. I'm and, happy you told hey us guys, so cool. for life for me and even women, I'm, I'm hearing some women say that stop calling women females, please. <laughs> Email. Please. That's what he's saying. Like, oh, you just went weird on me, bro. Like, females. Like, Please. I, I had females? to remind my partner, like, yo, can you, yeah. These you? females, these females. Please stop doing that. Please. <laughs> just. It's an odd statement to make. It's just very weird. It's very, where do you come from with this? Oh, that's another females. subject. <laughs> yeah. And I guess we're going to oh. cut off right now because we do have a life to get back to. And yeah. I do need to make sure this dog is eating or something like that and not costing me more money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of TFG. And we're out. Peace. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Financial Griot Podcast, powered by the Wealth Builders Collective. 